Welcome to a video on how to rotate a shape using a point that's not part of a shape. And it seems like an odd concept and it's a little bit more involved, but we're going to uh, take this triangle and we're going to rotate it using this point that's not part of the shape. And I always say, if you picture putting a sticky note on the hands of a clock and picture what it would do as it went around the clock, the shape would move and change its rotation at the same time. So that's similar to what we're doing here. And we'll start that off uh, with just a little bit of an idea about this. So I'm going to use this part, this point right here to help me out, this point of this triangle. And if I was to flip that uh, 90 degrees in a clockwise manner, what we would see is you would get a shape that rotated on that point and it would be pointing in this direction. So I've made a 90 degree rotation and I've turned it the same way that a clock would turn. So if you imagine this part of the triangle has rotated in that direction 90 degrees. So now it gets a little bit different though because I'm not going to rotate on that point. I'm going to rotate using this origin, the center point. But I'm still going to go 90 degrees. I'm still going to go in the clockwise direction. What I need to do is I need to use a protractor. This is going to make life so much easier when it comes to do things. So I'm going to take my protractor and I'm going to put the center of my protractor right on my rotation point. In this case, it's the origin. And I'm going to find that 90 degree angle. Okay. And so I've opened this up to the 90 degrees. And just for the sake of clarity, I'm going to take my protractor away. And my program here actually lets me uh, take the angle I just measured and use it. So I'm just going to take that angle and put it in here. Okay. If you were doing this on paper, you could just make a tick mark at the 90 degrees. That's sort of an idea. So I've got my 90 degrees from this point to the origin and back out. So what I need to make sure that I do is the distance that this line is from my rotation point to the point on my shape. It has to be the same over here. Now what I've done is with this shape already being rotated 90 degrees, I can just take it and I can put it on the rotation or on the point that it would match up to. So you'll notice it crosses right here. And what I can do is I can think about this. My triangle is one, two, three units from this axis. And if I look in the next uh, quadrant, quadrant one, I've rotated into that, but I'm also the base of my triangle is one, two, three units from that line or from that axis. You'll notice that my point that I'm connecting to my 90 degree angle is one, two, three, four units from that axis. And if you imagine this flipped sideways, this is the axis I would count from and it's one, two, three, four units from that axis. So right now, the yellow triangle has been rotated 90 degrees in a clockwise fashion using the origin or about the origin. I could do the same thing with different angles. I could do 180 degrees. I could do 270 and I can go in both directions, clockwise or counterclockwise or anti-clockwise, you may see it called. The other thing that I can also look at is each of these points is rotated 90 degrees as well. So if I take this and point it to the other point of my triangle, you'll see I haven't changed the size of my angle, but they line up. So this point on my green triangle is the same as the point on my yellow triangle. You can see the distances are the same. So I could, if I'd rather, I could rotate each individual point of the shape and then connect them back up. Or I can just rotate my shape to a given number of degrees and then use my protractor and angle to find out exactly where it goes in the next quadrant. Hopefully that helps and we'll talk to you soon.